inventing some um, acting in the classroom. So. It's for my mother, actually. She requested that she see what I'm like when I'm working. <laughs> it's cute, right? All right. With the iPhone? With my iPhone. Well, we'll see what, how this turns out. I mean, it could be staring directly at the ground at the moment for all I know. All right. So. So I gave a preamble to the initial class last week, so I should tell you guys the same thing. Um, this course, you don't have to read it, I'll read it. Um, this course is for your enrichment, all right? Um, we're going to take our sweet time with the subjects. So if you have any questions that come up, we should, we're going to stop and we're going to discuss it. Okay, no one should be left behind. This is going to be like a very diligent in-class, everyone understands course. Okay? And part of the fun with special relativity is just talking about it. Because there's a lot of paradoxes, there's a lot of confusion, and when you actually get through that and work through it, it's pretty gratifying. Okay? Um, and you have to forgive me if there's questions that you guys have that I'm not able to answer. Special relativity is a really tough subject, and if you don't approach it with a great deal of care, you can come up with a bad answer, which will just haunt you. Um, so at times, I'm going to say, give me a week, or give me a couple days, all right? But please ask hard questions, like try, you can pin me to the wall, that's what I'm here for, okay? Um, we have seven lectures, although I have the, probably described these as lectures. Um, here's Dean, I wonder if he's here for us. Um, this is more gonna be like a workshop, okay? So we're gonna have a lot of in-class problems, a lot of discussions, there's gonna be no assigned homework. I'm not just gonna talk to you guys the whole time, even that's exactly what I'm doing right now. But um, the point is for you to learn this by doing it. So especially some of the key jumps, like we're gonna go over time dilation today. You guys are gonna do that. I'm not gonna do it for you. You're gonna pretend you're Einstein in the patent office when you're 26, and you're trying to figure it out. Um, and my only goal for you guys which, and this should be yours too, after this course and after this first lecture, is that you deeply understand the postulates of relativity, why it's important, um, and what it means about something called a ubiquitous ether, okay, and uh, privileged inertial reference frames, or privileged observers. Why Einstein was so courageous to overthrow all of Newtonian Galilean mechanics. Um, and then after this, hopefully, you guys can sit down at a dinner table and explain to someone time dilation, or explain to someone the postulates of special relativity. And this is very a feasible goal for you guys. So ask questions that get you there. Or if you don't feel like you're getting there, let me know. All right? Okay. What's so, the term after the time dilation? What is time dilation? What's the term that she said? Like time dilation and? Time dilation and the postulates of special relativity. A postulate. Postulate. Oh, uh, postulate. It's postulate, yeah. I'm going to turn down the fan here. Okay, so postulate is something you, don't, you can't prove. Mm -hmm. You just accept it. to move forward. Oh. So it's a logical assertion. Postulate? Postulate. And we've got terrible markers here. Hopefully. Okay, good. All right, so why the word special? First of all, we're only going to be dealing with special relativity, not general relativity. That means we're going to be dealing with non-accelerating inertial frames, okay? So the typical example is you guys are both on trains, mm -hmm. all right? John Faye's on one, Cindy's on another, you can wave to each other. Um, let's say Cindy's going a bit faster, mm -hmm. okay? There is no experiment that you can do uh, to figure out which one of you sped up or which one of you slowed down to attain that difference in velocity. Okay, so another example is, let's say Cindy's going faster at first, and you both take a nap. And you wake up and suddenly you're right next to each other on different trains going at the same velocity. Okay? Who, who slowed down? Who sped up? You don't know. You, there's nothing you can do. There's absolutely nothing you can do internally with physical measurements to figure out your absolute velocity. And of course the cop out here is what? You're in trains, right? They're windows. Mm -hmm. So what can you do? Uh, look at the things outside. Exactly. Say there's trees every 10 meters, and you got a stopwatch. You say, well, 
No, before I was counting 10 trees every meter, now I'm counting 20, so I sped up. But the point is, with special relativity, is you can't claim that, because say there's some really clever person who has a billboard on the side, and it's just a landscape going on a reel, and he's tricking you. Okay? There is no absolute reference frame that you're allowed to default to in this case. And we'll talk about that more with light. But the point is, when there's acceleration, which is not special relativity, there are internal measurements that can tell you what's going on with your system, right? And we talked about this all the time, centripetal acceleration and being in a car. If you're drinking coffee and you put on the brakes, you see new fictitious forces. You see new laws of physics. Newton no longer applies. Or if you're turning to the right, then you see your coffee tilt to the left. So those are internally measurable, uh, internal measurables. I should say observables, okay? All right. So inertial means non-special. Inertial, inertial means not accelerating. So let me, yes. let me finally write something up here. So inertial reference frame, and I'll start doing some notation. So an inertial reference frame is normally denoted by S for a stationary reference frame, and S prime for a uniformly translating one, okay? And inertial means no acceleration. So we draw this, this is the x-axis, this is y, this is s, okay? And then we also have another axis, another frame of reference called s prime, which moves to the right with velocity u, okay? And this has its own axis, x prime and y prime. Okay, so prime means moving, mm -hmm. all right? And you guys are perfectly comfortable already with the Galilean transformation, although you, you don't even know it. X prime, we wrote in the center of mass, or I should say, the velocity of an object in the center of mass frame is its velocity in the lab minus the velocity of the center of mass, mm -hmm. right? You guys have seen this before, and you can do the backwards transformation by taking your V prime in the center of mass frame and adding the velocity of the center of mass. Okay? So these are inertial frames, inertial ref frames. Um, so the inertial reference frame means um, stationary? Or Neither can claim to be stationary. But, okay, so I'm, I'm getting too far ahead of uh, our discussion like philosophically. But technically, no person can claim to be at rest. Because you are you say you're at rest, right? I said, we're all egotistical. Like, I'm, I'm at rest. Well, that's not true. Because I'm not respect, at rest with respect to the sun, or to the earth, or to a plane, or to all these other things. So the point is, we can only define relative velocities, relative movement. Internally, there's nothing that any observer can do to say, I'm at rest. The laws of physics are the same for every single observer. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna develop that. I'm getting a little too far ahead because I've done this once, but um, this is the Galilean transformation. Okay, how to translate between the, the laws of 